Let's really give it up. Let's give it up for Jesus today. Let's give it up. Woo! Let's give it up for Jesus today. Let's give it up for the Lord Jesus today. Let's give it up to him today. It's so wonderful to see you and just to be together in Genesis like this. Wow, man, look at this. Woo! This is fantastic. Let's do it again. Come on. <laughs> uh, God is so good. Wonderful to see you and the fellowship. Let us know about yourself. We want to connect with you and be around you and get to know you, have fellowship with you, and just be a blessing to you. So take, seize every opportunity, ask any question you want, and the coffee's just next door right there. Okay, and remember now as we give, just give to the Lord. People give by all different means. I give um, online. That's how I give. I give online. So every month, you know, it's just automatic. My tithe, I've done that online. It works well for me and maybe for you. We're going to be receiving an offering. You have an opportunity to participate in something, watching God go to work. And when you do it, just say, Lord, this is for you. I'm giving it up for you. So let's pray together. Lord, you take everything today, everything, because this is all about you. In Jesus' name, as we worship together. Amen.
ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. Resurrecting me in your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Yeah. Oh, he's resurrecting me. The two soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our God has robbed the
Thank the Lord together. Just thank Jesus together. Let's just do it together. Just praise the name of the Lord. Just let worship lead. It's all yours, Lord. God bless you. Father, in these next few minutes that we have together, we desperately need truth. We just want to know the truth because the truth will set us free. We want to focus on you. We want to lay everything before you. So in the next few moments, Lord, we just give it to you. We just open our hearts to you. It's really quite as simple as that. We just want to 
let worship lead. Inhabit our praise because you've promised us that. And out of this will come everything that we could possibly dream and think and aspire to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles, and we're going to be in the book of Acts. So get out your apps and whatever means. Um, get your iPad out, whatever means you've got today, and just see if you can take a hard look with me at God's Word. And, uh, and if, you, if you want to just listen, that's good. Just listen, because God will speak to you, and uh, He's got a special word. I, I just want to say just a, just a couple of things right up front. All of us, I think, at varying times in our lives, want a fresh start. I, I can feel it. I'm in that group, you're in that group. <laughs> uh, things go down in life. I mean, a lot of things can go down in life. And after the months go by, the years go by, you can, you can get just worn out. And even though your intentions are good and your desires are good, you know, it's just hard to get up in the morning. You know, I've, so this is what I want to do. I want to use two illustrations. Number one, I want to speak of all young mothers here, and we've got a lot, a lot of them. Uh, young mothers are very precious people, but you could go to any young mother. First of all, ask them if they really love their babies and their little children, and they're going to tell you with all of my heart. No question about it. And then ask them if they ever get really just flat worn out. And young mothers are going to tell you they get really flat worn out. It doesn't take away their love. It doesn't diminish what they do. But little children uh, take just a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of skill. It's like raising a farm of squawking chickens. And if one's not squawking, then the other one is. And mothers are just very busy. They go non-stop, and they get really worn out. But it doesn't diminish their love. So if you talk about America today, uh, I'm going to say to you, you're going to say, I'm going to say, we're going to say, I love America, love my country, feel so honored. I think this is the best place in all the world. The American spirit, the American people, where we live, what we do. But something's not right. And this country, and I'm using a word, is just kind of like worn out in a different way. And there's conflict. And we need, in America, we need a fresh start. We just need a fresh start. We need to understand what it means to really value all people. We need to understand what we the people means. We need to, we need to really come to grips with these things. Now, as a believer, I can say a whole lot more about that. And I can perhaps offer some things to you. Your marriage, you love each other, but it's dwindling, and you need a fresh start. There's at least somebody today listening that you're ready to get out of there. You're on. You said that's it. You need a fresh start. I, I, I must have prayed early this morning with at least six or seven people, and I remember one particular lady, and she almost had tears in her eyes. She said to me, I'm just worn out. I've been battling with this thing now for over a decade. It just won't go away. So pain, you know, is a big factor. Now, why am I saying that to you? Because in the book of Acts, where we're going to be, something extraordinary happened. 
And, and I loved how Jared and the band led us as we were worshiping a moment ago. Because Jesus, the one who came to this earth and who gave his life for us, went and did what he said he was going to do. And he went to a cross and he died and he was buried and he was raised on the third day. And before he went back to heaven, he gathered a very small group of people around him. They were believers. And I'm telling you, those believers were flat worn out. They, they were shot. If, if you study in the Gospels, in the Bible, their life and what went on, following Jesus around those dusty roads, suffering abuse, getting stoned, thrown out of places, starving, having nowhere to sleep, um, suffering all kinds of prejudice and accusation. And, and here's Jesus, the one that they followed and believed in, and he went to the cross, and then even the circumstances of the cross. You know, you and I look at it and say, wow, you know, Jesus went and, and they must have all been standing there saying, this is it, he's died. But can you imagine the circumstances, the fear that was in their hearts? Because there was an angry crowd there. There was a mob. I mean, they were after Jesus and they were after anybody who followed him. And, and these, these people in the early church were they were dealing with a lot of things. And so Jesus, instead of just going straight back into heaven, he comes and he meets with them. And he, he gets them together. And that beginning part is so important. Now, I know there was just a handful of them, but it wasn't about numbers. We're packed out here this morning in Genesis. It's not about numbers, the number of people. It's never been about that. My wife is sitting right there. Um, you know, I remember like 35 years ago, I served a church in South Louisiana, which is where I pick up my Louisiana accent from. This is a Cajun accent. And, and the church that I served, which I love to this day, the first Sunday that we were there, I prepared all week to preach, went to church with my wife, small church, and nobody came. I mean, can you imagine that with a man of my caliber? You talk about take the wind out of my sails. I mean, I thought everybody wanted to listen to me. <laughs> nobody came. There was nobody there. And of course, you know that I love that because I told my wife, I said, sweetheart, you sit right there. She sat on the front row. Man, I loaded both barrels. Do you know my wife gave her heart to Jesus seven times that night? <laughs> I see that hand, I see, I mean, I'm telling you, it was just one of the greatest evangelistic crusades I've ever had in my entire life. Do you know, I've, I, it doesn't matter whether there's three people or five people, God gave us this togetherness for real reason. And you know, even in the passage that I'm about to read to you, it begins, it says that Jesus was staying with them when he gathered them together. And you'll be interested to know something. That's great, Jared. This is a fantastic thing in the Scriptures. That little word, staying there, is the word to eat with them. They, they fellowship together. You know, some people have said to me, why do I need to go to church? Well, there's a lot of reasons why we gather, but one of good reason is to fellowship together. Be around friends, man, because we care. You know why we're here today? Because we care about you. We care about each other, man. We're friends. We're in this together. We're doing life together. That's what this is all about. And listen, out there in the streets, it, it's, a, it's a grand life. It's filled with football and and promise, and going to school, and, and businesses, and making money, and dating, and getting married, and all those things. But let me tell you something. I need you. I need you, man. I need you. I, I love this. this and, and what Jesus was doing is he, in the book of Acts, we're going to see this. It's going to be fantastic as we unpack this. He, he just got them together. So just let me read this to you. I want to just read. So I'm going to read from verse 4 through to verse 8 of Acts chapter 1. Here's what, 
what the Bible says. And while he was staying eating with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. Verse 5, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. We're going to see that when we get to chapter 2. So when they had come together, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to overcook the chicken here, but I just, this is so inspiring, guys. This, I'm telling you, just to be in here, I could hardly stand myself on the front row here just worshiping, just being together. When they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed for his own authority, but here's what you do need to know, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Spartanburg, in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and all around the world. Isn't that a great passage? And, and here's, the, here's the thing, what was it? Now remember, Jesus had already died. He'd already been buried. He'd already been raised. He's alive. This is the resurrected Jesus. By the way, this has got nothing to do with the price of eggs. But if you've ever asked the question, what are you going to look like after you die? You ever wondered? I'll teach you on that one of these days. The Bible's very clear what we're going to look like. And it starts with just looking at Jesus. No ghosts, angels with wings. The Bible never says that. Well, I'm going to float on a cloud playing a harp. <laughs> uh-uh. And you can thank the Lord that's not going to happen because everybody would leave heaven if I did that. <laughs> anyway, see, see how the Bible is so rich? This is God's truth. So Jesus gathered the church, the early church, just right there at the beginning. <laughs> and he gave them three commands. And by the way, the little word there was not he suggested like, listen, why don't you and I get together in Genesis and let's consider whether or not we should worship the Lord Jesus. See, Jesus ordered them. He gave a command. Now that runs against us, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're Americans. I'm American, man. I I like the we the people thing. I mean, that's pretty cool to me. I like this collective agency. When it comes to God, he hung the moon and the stars in place. I mean, he's creator. He made it, and he knows everything. By the way, did you know that God knows exactly where you're going to be tomorrow? He knows exactly how to fix your marriage. He knows exactly what job you're going to get when you graduate. He knows exactly what's next when you get laid off. He knows exactly how to handle that situation on the campus. He knows. Because he's God. So here are the disciples now. I want you to really get a hold of this. They're fearful. they got stones in their flip-flops. They're uncomfortable. They're being persecuted. They're scared to death. Listen, if I was one of those disciples, and I'm being perfectly honest with you on a human level, I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. I'm going to go and hide somewhere. I'm going to go to a place somewhere else, but I'm getting away from all of this. And Jesus gave to them three commands. So here they are. Number one, Stay right where you are. That's what he said right there. 
He said, do not leave. Do not depart. Do not change your chair. Do not run somewhere else. Now, folks, listen. One of the things you need to be very careful of is always believing that the grass is greener on the other side of the hill. When you constantly shift and move and God's not in it, you're going to be left with a restlessness. It'll mess you up like you don't know. Pay your dues. If you're starting a job, for example, stick it out, stick with it. Build some street credit. Learn how to do it. Plow through the field. Float your boat through the stormy sea. Don't just pack up and pack up and pack up and pack up. That's why many people who are looking to employ people like you, they will look at your record. And if you get to the age of 30 and you've just got a track record of jumping around from one place to the other, be careful. Some of you going to college. Stick with it, man. Don't start switching like this every time something happens that you don't like. Now, when that translates into the life of believers, we do that spiritually because of our human nature. We jump around. We never give God time. No, well, I don't like this. Then I'm going to go and try that. Then I'm going to, because we live in a fast food generation. All of us do. When I go get a cup of coffee at my favorite coffee house, I want it right now. And if it's not hot enough, then I go to the next place. That's part and parcel of our human nature, isn't it? And Jesus looked at the disciples because he loved them. And he knew what was about to happen. And he said to them, stay. Stop. Don't leave. He didn't need to say anything else. Because God is truth. But he followed that up very quickly with the second command. He didn't only say stay, but following that he said, wait for the promise of the Father. By the way, waiting is an active ingredient. It's an engagement of the mind. It's a deliberate action. I am going to wait. Boy, that's a tough assignment. <laughs> you know, somehow, I think God was trying to say what he's already said. They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And, and we're always in such a hurry to get where we're going that we're certainly not willing to stay where we are, and most certainly we're not willing to wait. But Jesus qualified what he said. He said, I don't want you to just wait for no reason. I want you to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Did you get that, guys? He said, I want you to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is Jesus. And he even said in that same verse in verse 4, he said, he's the one that you heard me teach you about. Back in John's gospel, what did Jesus say? He said, listen, I'm going to at some time go back to heaven. I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you on your own because I, the Holy Spirit, am going to come back down upon you and I'm going to fill you and I'm going to give you power and I'm going to do something for you that you cannot do for yourself. You must wait for the Holy Spirit. Listen. Without the Holy Spirit, you and I are never going to ever be convicted for our sin. We're never going to be convicted about righteous living. We're never going to be convicted about judgment and the things that come 
to pass and come to be in God's timing and His order. Jesus said, listen, without the Holy Spirit, you are nothing. You've got nothing. You're going nowhere. You cannot do it. Stay here in Jerusalem. And I want you to know, I have promised you this. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. I mean, that's just awesome. Now, come on, let's be reasonable together. You think they understood that? You don't have to understand God to obey His commands. You don't have to understand God to just obey his commands. In fact, that's the way God wants it. We live in give me an explanation generation, otherwise I'm out of here. Jesus had risen from the dead and he appeared to them and he ate with them. By the way, somebody ever asked me if there's going to be food in heaven. All I can tell you is after Jesus rose from the dead, he ate. I like that, man. And if you really get into the Greek text, it was like biscuits and bacon, egg, and cheese. I'm, cut the bacon. This was in the, in the Jewish sec, sector here. <laughs> Turkey, egg, and cheese. Man, I'm telling you, my theology is just out of line right here. All my Jewish friends are going to have, what, what, what? Whoa, what? This is entirely preposterous. We don't, Jesus wouldn't have eaten. At any rate. Jesus told them, wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm asking us, I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm calling us. God is, let's not leave. Let's stay. It's wait on the Holy Spirit. And then number three, follow. Just follow. What did he mean by follow? <laughs> That's what he says here. He says, listen, you need to do all these things that I'm teaching you and telling you. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he is going to give you power to become witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. I'll tell you what, even standing up for Jesus in today's world puts the fear of the Lord into me. It's like even getting more difficult to say grace in a restaurant because you feel like everybody's watching you. There's kind of a, an intimidation. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, man, they're looking at me like I'm a weirdo. And Jesus said, follow what the Holy Spirit does for you and in you and through you because he will give you power to be a witness for me. Now the word, I'm not going to unpack this completely today, but to be a witness for Christ means that God by His Spirit is going to so fill me and enable me to become all that God wants me to be. That's a witness. When I'm all that God, when I'm being the husband God wants me to be and the father God wants me to be and the friend God wants me to be, and the football player that God wants me to be, and the cheerleader that God wants me to be, and the member of the band that God wants me to be, and the person who interacts in community that God wants me to be. When the power of God comes down upon me, it's as though God gets a hold of me, and from my toes to my head, He begins to take over, and He begins to take me and do with me what I cannot do with myself. God does it. Would you bow your heads with me for a minute as Jared comes, every head bowed, this is it.
This is what it means to let worship lead. This is, this is a people like you and me. All of us. I want this. I want this. I want more to life. I, I, I just, I want to be whole and complete and filled. I, I want to be happy and joyful. I, I want to have meaning. I want to be a real friend to my friends. I want to be a real husband. I want to be a real father, grandfather. I want to be, I, I want to be someone that, that, that really matters, not in terms of anything else, but just like a, an inner something. Man, there's just something about that man, about that lady, about that boy, about that girl. I, I just, they just, there's just something inside of them that dwells up and wells up, just something deep inside. Lord, give me a fresh start today. And Lord, I want to let worship lead, and I want you to take control and today I'm just going to open up the altar of God. This is not Genesis altar. It's not a church's altar. It's not a city or a state. This is not America's altar. This is God's altar. This is God's house. I'm just going to ask you today. It's open. You can come. You can inquire. You can ask questions. You can come up to any of us and say, how can I connect? What can I do? Would you pray with me, for me? I'm facing surgery. I, I just want someone to pray with me. I'm praying for my daughter, for my marriage. Maybe, maybe today you're going to come and take us by the hand and say, I, I want to talk to someone about Jesus. We'd love to help you today. I, we'd love to show you how you can take Jesus into your heart. You can become a believer just like these early people, just like so many of us today. Of course, that invitation's always open. It's not restricted to one time, one worship. Let worship lead permeates everything we do. But we're going to stand in a minute and, and the band is going to lead us. And I'm just going to ask you, we're just going to open this up and say, come, come. I'm asking prayer people to come and pray, ask God. I want you to know whomever you say, we're praying for you today. I'm praying for you. Because God is gathering us together. And today, this is what he's saying. Stay, wait, follow. That's awesome. I'm ready. Count me in. Let's do this together. Let's stand as we sing and praise the Lord together. You come. You come as we praise God, as we let worship lead. You come. You come. Just come on. Just come on. Come from the balcony. We're going to wait. Just come on. Just step out and come. Just come. Let's start a movement. Young people, let's start a revolution and a movement. Are there some teenagers, some seniors who would come today? And just kneel at the altar of God and say, Lord, it's time. Use me and make a difference in and through me. Just come. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Only the grace of God. Let's do it. Let's do this.
this? You ready for this? When we've been there 10,000 years, when we've been there, listen to this. Let worship lead us, Lord. with our musicians in the background while there are some being set free, surrendering, saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Just think about it. Just let worship lead. Let worship lead. Perhaps today you just You've been brought here today by God's purpose. The Lord has spoken to you about something in your life. Just, just let it go. Get a fresh start today. God will do it. Just give you a fresh start. Just release. Just let it go. ask in a minute, Jared's going to send us out with the team as we worship the Lord together. I want us to go out in a spirit of worship. Just go out in a spirit of worship. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then come back and get our cups filled up again. And then spend all the week being poured out just let him take it. Lord Jesus, what you are doing is none of our doing. It's only you. And the best is yet to be. Where do we go? What do we do, Lord? But the disciples asked the same question, and then the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they went to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and around the world. Let that be us, Lord Jesus. Let us follow hard after God. Give us a fresh start. Now, in the name of Jesus, to dismiss us only with your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in God's grace. God bless you this morning. Give it up for him. Give it up for him.